All right, welcome back for the last episode of Blue Shift. I'm Blasinus, and... And I am Tons, and Barney is once again underground. Yes, yes he is. And don't worry about the whole vest thing, actually. Uh, we just kind of picked up one there. Oh, nice. Oh, wait, did we pick it up from a dead guy? Yes, we did. Less nice, but nice for us. Oh, it's okay, sir. I can take it. Those things. They're everywhere. We've got to get out of here. together. If we don't get the power cell charged, we're all going to die. That, that was so deadpan. We're all gonna die. Yeah, like, that's sort of like the original security guard voice there is like, they might have noticed that, like, in that clip from the third episode there that we just did, but, uh, yeah, the security guards are incredibly just very flat in their delivery. Was that also the case in, in the original Half-Life? Oh, yes. Like, nobody ever said that the voice work in the original Half-Life was especially good. Anyway. Right, we were sent to get a power cell because the people that were sent down didn't come back. Oh, yes. And we're also going to be reintroduced to some old friends. But there is one way to give them a proper, like, welcoming gift. Oh, those soldiers again. That's right. The ones that are still trying to cover up everything that happened here. That's the ones. And for some reason, somehow, they managed to get themselves down here into this underground reactor in an old lab that nobody has touched for years and was behind a, like, plastered up wall. Maybe they got very, very lost. Maybe we're just incredibly unlucky right now. I mean, that's sort of been the the thing for all the Half-Life protagonists, is that they all are incredibly unlucky. Except they also have a ridiculous amount of, like, ability to just get themselves out of trouble as well. So it's I guess it's a decent combination. I mean, when you think about it, like, we're taking on a well-armed, like, military force armed with nothing but a helmet that doesn't even cover our face, and a vest. I think we're, we're a hybrid of very lucky and very unlucky. That's for sure. So, this brings us back to where we were before. We'll just have to remember this for later. In the meantime, our actual objective is to raise this bridge. But we can't, because the power's out. The t title of this chapter is actual, actually called Power Struggle. Because, well, you know... See, that's a good pun. Yeah. I don't know, I was kind of a fan of insecurity as well. Oh, true. Another vending machine that we can't actually get a dang soda from. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, like, uh, all, all them sodas are already there on the ground. Now, in some games, I think this one as well, we can actually, like, run over sodas in order to... Actually, yeah, I think we just did. Like, if there's a soda on the ground, we can grab them for, like, one single point of health each time. <laughs> Barney throwing grenades at the soldiers. I want soda! <laughs> <laughs> yep. And there's actually no reason to save any of our equipment because, you know, this is actually a, um, well, it's our second to last area where we'll need to do some damage, but, uh, the final segment is actually going to be pretty tame. Anywho. Oh. Don't yeah, so, so, someone just blasted their horn outside the, outside the window. signaling the arrival of our friends. For sure. Aliens. Now then, as I was saying, this is a puzzle, kind of. Like, you see the detonation cord kind of got split in the middle? Yes. We can't well, 
Yeah, we, that, that means we need something in order to complete the connection. Ooh. Big metal can of something? Yep. The point is that it's metal. And it exploded as well for some reason. You know what? Everything in this game explodes. It's probably best not to think about it too hard. Maybe people have built Black Mesa to be designed in this way. Like, let's just make everything explode. For fun. For science. Uh, yeah. Maybe they got bored of, like, 20th underground corridor they had to design, and like, okay, let's put a fun exploding wall in this one. Yeah, maybe. So what we're actually doing here is we need to drain the coolant from this area here, like the... Uh, I guess this is where, like, the uh, main, like, fuel rods get inserted. I don't know how reactors work. Me neither. So if we went to Zen and we uh, activated the device, why are there still aliens here? Well, no, what we're actually using the device for is it's going to be a relay that allow us to open a, a teleporter in order to actually just run to the hills, basically. Oh, okay. So we've, we're just trying to get out of the facility. We aren't trying to get all the aliens out. We've given it no, up. No, no, no. Yeah, we're basically just saying, you know what? Someone else can handle this mess. I'm out. I'm gonna save our own butts. I mean, you know what? Like, at the end of the day, Barney is actually going to end up saving more people than Gordon Freeman and the other protagonists end up saving. Huh. Hadn't thought about it that way. But like, I guess you're right. <laughs> Yeah, like, at the end of, of Gordon's journey, he goes to Zen, he defeats the big mastermind, and then he gets abducted by this guy in a blue suit, and he's never heard from again for years. Oof. So but very nice of the guy in the blue suit. Yeah, like you might have saw him going by on a tram. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I pointed that guy out, the G-man yeah. with, with with the briefcase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he does not care at all about Barney, and this is just actually just a little cut so that I can arrange these barrels without uh, w wasting everyone's time. Because we actually have an ingenious plan here in order to get ourselves over this pool of. Barney's like, I am swimming in no more toxic things today. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know that that would happen, actually, but... <laughs> yeah, that, that, that ended up like being an interesting little blooper there. So, anyway, now that we've got our barrels positioned in the pool... Voila, it's a bridge. Oh, that is cool! I mean, kind of. Like, it took me a little bit to th figure that out the first time I played this game. But it all kind of makes sense when you think about it. Barney got so tired of swimming in crap that he's like, no, this time, this time I'm making a bridge. Yeah, besides, that's instant death crap. Now, these grunts here, they, they fire these guns called hive hands, effectively firing homing in hornets that, like, just, uh, they sting like the dickens, basically. Ooh. Yeah, you might think that hornets are an unusual choice for your, like, he heavy infantry. But no, those things, like, they can fire out, like, dozens of them at a time, and they could just curve around corners, and yeah. I wouldn't want to have bees fired at me. Well, me neither, actually. That sounds like an absolutely terrible thing to have fired at you. I mean, in the original Half-Life, you could actually appropriate one for yourself. And it turns out the hive hand actually has infinite ammunition, so you can fire infinite numbers of bees. 
Oh, that's too many bees. I mean, they don't actually go after you. Like, you can inflict bees upon your enemies. Okay, that's that's an acceptable number of bees, then, as long as they aren't on us. But sadly, Barney does not have the ability to appropriate a bee shooter. No. Like, he will never oh. use any of the cool, like, alien weaponry or the experimental weaponry. They should let Barney have fun, too. <laughs> yeah, there are laser guns. There are, like, these these little hopping aliens that go chasing after th folks. Yeah, none of that. Barney deserves better. He does, but he's not going to get it. Because, as we'll discover, the universe kind of hates Barney. Well, I like Barney. I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of okay with Barney. As far as protagonists go, like he, like he's not really like any less heroic than anyone anyone else. Like he's actually like throwing himself in, into danger in order to save the day. I just, I really like the concept of just this ordinary dude who went to work to do his ordinary job. I mean, admittedly, at a top secret government facility, and then everything started going to hell. He was thrown into danger, but he's still just this ordinary dude. I mean, I guess that's true. Like, he's not like this, like, extraordinary PhD student or anything. He's just your average Joe doing his security guard thing. I mean, how how ordinary or special was Gordon? Because he was a scientist, right? I mean, he was a, uh, like I said, he had a PhD in theoretical physics, and... In, in a sense, I guess, he never really got much appreciation for that because, as I mentioned, all that he did in his job was he went into a test chamber and he pushed a cart around. Okay, then I guess Gordon is also an ordinary dude who has to save the day. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, they're all ordinary people. Like, none of them are, like, um, really exceptional individuals. Like, they're all just... Well, as I said in my thread title, they're uh, they're just uh, p ordinary people caught in the wrong place. Black Mesa, be better to your employees. Be better than this. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they're not going to get much chance now. Like, I'm pretty sure that the HR department might have gone kablooey at this point. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they had guns. I mean, there's no reason why HR couldn't have had guns. Oh man, that would have been a game where you have to where you have to play like a like a sad sack of like an HR representative who has to survive in this situation. <laughs> I am filing so many complaints with my manager after this. <laughs> So then, like after all that in order to power the facility, we finally reunite with that guard and the scientist from earlier. I was hoping you'd show up. You have to get this power cell charged and back up to Dr. Oh, he doesn't look like he's doing so well. I'm hurt pretty bad. You can probably push the power cell through the fence into the charging station behind me. Let me see if I can get out of Ah, see, he's gonna walk it off. <laughs> that shouldn't have been as or... funny as it was. <laughs> oh no, I think it was supposed to be entirely comedy. <laughs> Let me see if I can move out of the way and then he just stands up and dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the series is pretty well known for its dark comedy. Wait, we were supposed to reunite with the guard and the scientist. What happened to the scientist? Is he dead too? Yeah, we we passed by him. His uh, yeah, he he's dead. They're all dead. Everyone's dead except me. And Doctor Rosenberg somehow, despite being the loudest person in this entire facility. For sure. Okay, so also, are you carrying that, or did you just have to push it? 
oh, you're shoving it. But it, if you press the use button while you're um, rubbing up against something, then yeah, you just do this giant shove that actually like carries you along with it. It's kind of funny to look at. So then, mission accomplished. Time to go back up. Yeah, that's right. We went to Zen and we had to backtrack, and now we went down underground and we also have to backtrack. That game, I would say backtracking is definitely one of its flaws. Oh, that one's a little shorter. Well, no, I I, I edited it a little bit. Oh. <laughs> well, you edited very smoothly. Then even recognized that there'd been a cut. Let's hurry. There's no time to waste. Stay down here to monitor the system levels and direct the procedure. I need you to climb up to the control room and activate the main power. Once the process has started, you'll also need to release the damping locks each time the system has charged in order to open the displacement field. But don't worry, Mr. Calhoun. The process is simple, and I'll let you know when you need to do something. So, yeah, all that explanation, it amounts to basically, we have to press a button. <laughs> that was... Many, many words when few would suffice, Dr. Rosenberg. Hi, Calhoun. Once the system is initialized, it'll take a few moments for the interpolating resonance coils to achieve focus. Yes, everything will blow up if we don't do this as well. Yeah, teleporting in just when you least expect them. And honestly, if this whole sequence kept that sort of momentum where you know, things were just teleporting in and everything was like chaotic while you were having to do this sort of thing, like, that would be great. Yeah, that would have been really interesting. That's actually uh, the uh, the second to last interruption. Like, there's only going to be one more thing that pops up. We're almost there. Okay, the system is fully charged. Throw the switch located at the window of the control room. <laughs> Oh god, do we have to do it for every single individual person? Yep. But first, what would happen if we were a little less, like, on, on the ball? I cannot wait to see. Calhoun, our time is running out! Go to the window of the control room and throw the switch! It's too late! The system is collapsing! You kill us all! <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, while we're waiting for the next, like, charge, like, yeah, we've got ourselves something happening here on the side. Almost there. All right, we've reached full charge again. Open the field, Calhoun! You must go now, Simmons! Fortunately, there are only two other scientists, otherwise, yeah, we'd be here all day. Yeah, just, that would be awful gameplay, just waiting for person after person, like 20 scientists. I don't know, I think that would be, like, kind of like, after a certain point, it would be sort of like ironic comedy. Oh yeah, good point. Oh, dang. Is this our friends? Oh yeah. All right, it's ready. But they are certainly taking their sweet time with it. Good luck, Mr. Calhoun. I'll see you on the other side. If 
Finally. It did take them the longest time to get through that one door. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if you do look inside, like, you see that they had to kind of go around and, like, cut their way through a vent and such. But anyway... Oh. <laughs> that's that. Oh, so if you had an explosive right there, you could just deal with them as soon as they show up. I mean, yeah. So, to summarize, our final confrontation of the game was two hound eyes, a few soldiers, and a button. Wow, that is a little bit underwhelming, maybe? Maybe a little. Ah, there he is! Calhoun, you've arrived! When you didn't come through right away, we thought that the... Oh no, there's something wrong here. Simmons, come look at Calhoun! His body oh, yeah, we're still flashing green. Ah, uh, yes. What? Perhaps I, uh, perhaps I wasn't entirely truthful. Perhaps there is one last final encounter. Oh, lord! Or perhaps there isn't. Sorry, Gordon, you're on your own. So, yeah, that was completely nothing. Dang it! I thought the trip to the border world was, like, gonna result in, like, a boss fight or something. I think everyone did. I, I got got. Oh, fully admit it. I got got. We made it, Mr. Calhoun. We made it. And that's the end of the game. We did it! Yep. And our final assessment from the G-Man? No further comment. That's how unimportant Barney was. Yep. So do you ever hear, like, anything more about Barney in any of the other games? Like, do we have any idea what happens to him after this? Oh yes, actually. Barney Calhoun will return. Ooh. Yeah, like... That's actually basically the one thing that they keep from this game. Like, Dr. Rosenberg and those two scientists, they don't appear again. But Barney does. Huh. Like, yeah, the the guy who wrote the Half-Life series goes by the name of Mark Laidlaw. And his basic opinion on the Gearbox games is that they're in a sort of, like, relative state of canonicity. Like, they can basically just pick and choose what actually happened from them. So, yeah, basically, in terms of stuff that's actually important for the later plots, like, the only thing that's important is the fact that Barney survived. Anyway, that's gonna be it for Blue Shift. Other than the remaining credits, then we're pretty much done. Any final thoughts on the game? Uh, well, I'm really happy Barney made it out of there. I agree with you that the level design was kind of meh, but I had a lot of fun commenting on it, and uh, there were definitely a lot of good funny moments, and I'm probably going to be saying, You've killed us all, Calhoun, for quite a while. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll see you guys again, and we'll be picking this up later on in Opposing Force.